Hi, I'm Gavin Haverstick with Haverstick Designs. And I'm Oscar Otero. And uh, this is The Sound Project. Today, we are going to talk about the importance of the aesthetics in studios that we design. Um, for us, it, it, we have a mission statement for our business, and it's called uh, We Create Rooms That Inspire. Uh, it's very important to be able to uh, have an acoustically accurate space, but it's, if it's also a space that you don't want to be in for very long, we've missed the mark, and it needs to be something that's uh, um, creative and, and inspiring for you, and a lot of that is, is going to be the aesthetics of the room. And so, uh, Oscar is a, as a, a senior acoustical consultant on staff, uh, he's heavily involved in all the acoustical details. But one of the things that he uh, heads up for us is our rendering department. We do photorealistic 3D renderings of spaces to give people visuals of what the studio is going to look like even before it's built. And so um, I want to talk a little bit about um, the, that rendering process and why it's beneficial for, for our design process. Yeah. And it's it, I started about four years ago. And that was kind of one of my big major projects was building our 3D modeling process. Because mm -hmm. before we were doing almost everything in strictly in 2D through AutoCAD sheets and everything. But uh, extrapolating that into 3D really, really changes the game when it comes to actually seeing and getting a feel for what the room is. Because you can see a floor plan and know how many feet you have to work with. But when you actually see the ceiling height and you actually see like, oh, my ceilings are going to, or my speakers are going to be this high up on the wall or you know, the, the window is going to be taking this much of the, of the wall, you really get to get a sense of how much space you actually have available and actually get a sense of what the, what the vibe's actually going to be like in a room. Yeah. And then even that, uh, another thing that, that people, I mean, we're all creative people and, uh, seeing something in a, in a 2d CAD set, it just doesn't, uh, uh, give you that, that full picture. And, and, and I think what you do with these renderings and we'll show examples of it as well. Um, it's, it's just a game changer for people because it really, it's the part of the process process that I see everyone's eyes light up. You know, it's like, right. it's, you know, we're talking about sound isolation and, and trying to, to block how many decibels at different frequencies and people's eyes kind of glaze over and they're just like, all right, well, that's cool. Uh, but w what's this place going to look like? And I think it's really fun when, when we first get to the, those renderings. Right. And cause the, if, you know, our, the whole, one of our, part of our mission statement is making rooms that inspire and we want the end product to be a room that they're inspired in, but we also want working with us to be something that creates inspiration of, you know, we want people to be excited about the project as they're going through, as we're going through the process yeah. and seeing those things of like, you know, renderings and as it's moving through that process, you know, it's, it's exciting to see people see, see those images or um, give notes on those images and say like, this is a space that I could imagine working in, or this is what, I want to do to make this be a space that I'm excited that I'm really excited about. That's a good point because the thing is with uh, any studio project like while the end result is super fun and exciting, um, getting there isn't always uh, there there's certain details that are have to be taken care of in order to get a good result. However, they may not be the most fun thing. And so right. this is, uh, I think, a little bit of a, a break from all of those uh, details and, and things that we have to consider. Um, it, this allows uh, you know, people to be creative again and be, get excited about it. So. Yeah, and because building a room or building a building or any construction project is such a long process. And you know, that first day of you know, the grand opening and when you get to cut that ribbon, it's so exciting. But you kind of forget about the years or months or you know how long it takes before that moment and so creating those moments where people are excited and feel involved in the design process is is really key to making a process a project fun yeah, yeah. absolutely um so tell us a little bit about the process of, of how we hone in on the aesthetic direction for the project because obviously with the the aesthetics there's we've all seen lots of cool looking studios but it's also very subjective so tell me about that process a little bit Right, so it's it's it always starts with conversations with clients of uh, getting to know somebody you know personally and getting to know them what their goals are musically for recording studios and things like that, and just asking pretty direct questions of what they're wanting out of a, out of a space, mm -hmm. and uh, and once we've gotten those conversations, uh, we ask them to send us some some inspiration photos of photos of architectural spaces and different recording studios. Um, and different images of things that inspire them. Mm -hmm. And that's always kind of like the basis for our first you know, stab at an aesthetic direction mm -hmm. where they'll give us a, a lot of images and we try and find you know, the through line of what's in common with those. And, and we try and guide clients in getting those images where we don't only need recording studios. You know, we want 
any architectural spaces or any really images in general that inspire you. You know, we've had clients send us, you know, image like photos of mountains and beaches and nature because that's what excites them or just color palettes if that's what their kind of starting point is. Um, and so getting those, getting those, that direction from them is really the, the, what we're basing everything off of because there are a million things that I think would look good, but it's all about what they think looks good. And so yeah. we want to base it off of, off of what they're thinking. Exactly. I, I say it all the time is that we don't design studios for ourselves. Uh, now it's fun to be a part of the process, but we're not the ones that are going to be spending long hours in there, you right. know? And, and, uh, for us, uh, I mean, you can check out our, our portfolio on our website, like almost no two rooms look alike. And, uh, there's no kind of like cookie cutter design that, that we go to for every project because, uh, it's, it's so subjective and, and, uh, we don't want to create the same thing for, uh, the next person because the, their tastes are going to be different. Right. And it's so interesting, like how often a lot of, sometimes a client's inspiration, they'll say, this is the room that I want. And it'll be one, like, you know, one image or one room that they want to replicate. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of times we have to like, you know, have some conversations with them of, is this truly what you want? Or like your needs are, it might be a little bit more unique or a little bit different. And so helping clients hone in on that is really, is really important as well of finding out how we can make it really be their room. Yeah. And I know that uh, one of the things to help guide people along, because obviously people can uh, do Google searches of studios and find things that they like, but we also built a database uh, of all the inspiration shots that we've been given from clients. And um, we numbered all of them and into a Dropbox folder. We send mm -hmm. that out to people. It just gives them an easy um, uh, reference. I think there's probably 100 plus studios in there where they can comment on it and say, hey, in, in uh, studio number 71, I really like the diffusers on the back wall or, or I like the coloring in, in uh, room 56. And, and so just gives them a starting point if they don't want to do the legwork of like finding a bunch of studios, we have a good database to send them. Yeah, and, and we really try and communicate to our clients to give us as much information as you can because it's all about how well we know the client is how well we can design a space for them. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's very, uh, it's all about just getting to know them, you know? Yeah. Um, all right. So when we're working on studios, uh, Sometimes it's just a single room in someone's house, and and um, you know the aesthetic direction for that is is uh, determined from these inspiration shots. But um, we also do a lot of multi-room facilities, like commercial facilities or multiple rooms in someone's house. Uh, how does that change things uh, when you're dealing with more than one room? Right. Well, when we're designing a room, you know, it's and especially in a recording studio, it's not just interior design, and it's not just making the best acoustic space, you know, it's both. It's, we need to be, you know, it's 100% aesthetics and 100%, uh, you know, function, functionality of making sure that it sounds good. Um, and so that's kind of nice because we kind of have the building blocks in place of what we need to do to get an acoustic, uh, an acoustic space that sounds good mm -hmm. of, we need to some extent, you know, bass trapping in a room. We need to be placing absorption in places. We need some diffusion. Mm -hmm. And so those building blocks are a bit more, uh, we have them available in our rooms, and so it gives us a better starting place. But when when I'm designing a room, I always want to have you know kind of a focal point of what of what the main focus in the room or where the, where everything your eye is kind of being drawn to. Uh, it's a bit easier in say a room like a control room or um, or a mastering suite or something where there's a workstation like a dedicated space where somebody's mixing from and the speakers and the consoles set up. Uh, that is it obviously lends itself to being the center of attention. And so then you can really kind of have that in place and then build the design around that. Uh, it gets a bit harder in, you know, live rooms or isolation booths or, you know, auxiliary spaces where there's not that dedicated focal point, but you have to, you know, kind of create the room as a whole, but still have some kind of attention, uh, you know, centerpiece that's drawing your attention a bit more. Yeah. Uh, and so that can take a lot of different shape forms. You know, it can be, you know, a main aesthetic wall, or it can be a particularly interesting ceiling cloud in a in a live room, or uh, a lot of clients want, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, natural lighting, and so having window spaces or direct sunlight coming in and mm -hmm. making sure that that's a striking part of a part a part of the uh, of the of the design of the of the room, yeah. because a lot of the places that we design are in some pretty striking, you know, places, you know, where we've done, you know, in you know, Michigan, uh, one that comes to mind is our project with Chip Freeman at uh, Susu Studios, mm -hmm. I believe is what yeah. it's called. Um, his is on the edge of like a lake and a, it's this beautiful forest on the side and he really wanted to make sure that he had 
that aesthetic in mind where he wanted to be able to look out and see the see the see the water and mm-hmm. see that see that and so that can you know play a role as well for sure well and and with multi-room facilities as well um it goes both ways. Sometimes we have clients that want us to have a similar aesthetic that kind of flows from every room. Uh, and then we also have people that's like, hey, um, we want four control rooms as part of this facility. And each one of them, we want to look wildly different from each other, you know, right. so it's a different vibe and a different different mood, depending on which one that you go in. Um, so that's really always fun for me, because it's it's like uh, uh, being able to deliver on that, because it's it's a hard task, you know, like coming up with all these different designs and, and uh, kind of kind of making it uh, making it all work out so that it's not uh, uh, kind of over overbearing when you walk into a space. Right. And it's, it's like you said, where every project is so different and where no two rooms look the same. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's kind of the unfortunate reality of like, if you ask a consultant a question, almost always the answer is it depends, <laughs> you know? Right. Um, and, but it really does. And so then the role of the consultant is to show you why it depends and what it depends on and how we can come to those answers together. Yeah. Yeah. See, um, we've talked about focal points in, in um, uh, some control rooms. Maybe we can show some examples of, of what that looks like, um, you know, because it's when we're starting off, like you said, with this focal point and let's say control rooms, uh, for instance, um, man, I mean, people are spending a lot of time looking at that front wall, you know, like right. it, both clients and the people that are working in there. And it really kind of sets off the entire room. Right. And in so many recording studios, uh, especially if it's a multi-room studio, that center wall will be a window. But uh, especially in modern days, you know, so many studios are just one room studios in somebody's house or just one room studio in a building where somebody's just, you know, I just want to be able to work in here and I'll turn around and I'll record in the back if I need to. Or I'm just a dedicated mixing or producing just only off the computer. And so especially nowadays, the front wall needs to be have some kind of centerpiece so you're not just looking at a blank slate <laughs> always, you know. Yeah. Um, and so one of, you know, a good example that comes to mind for that is a project we did with Brooklyn Duo. They're a band or they're a, a musical duo out in Washington, in the Washington, Seattle area, I believe. Mm-hmm. And they, they're a husband-wife duo where the husband is an amazing cellist and the wife is just as an amazing of a pianist. <laughs> and yeah. they make some amazing covers on YouTube of, you know, pop songs and classical formats and you can look at their website and they have a resume as impressive as anything I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, but we designed a recording studio for them uh, a couple years ago. And with their studio, it was, they had a pretty distinct uh, aesthetic in mind because they got popular on YouTube and all of their stu- all of their videos were them in a living room type of setting. And it was such like a visual component to their, to their career was their fans seeing them uh, on video and feeling connected to them that way. Mm-hmm. And so their vision for the, for the space was to have it look like a living room in the back where they could be filming um, and kind of have that set up as their video studio of their performance space and it would feel very comfortable and really homely looking. Mm-hmm. But they wanted the front to look very modern recording studio-esque where they wanted mm-hmm. it to feel sleek, professional, and clean and very, very audio engineering focused. Sure. Um, and so... And theirs, it was the same thing where it was a one-room studio where they're recording themselves most of the time. They wanted to be able to do everything of film, record, mix, produce, all in the same room. And so that front wall was just going to be a blank wall, and we needed to figure out, you know, kind of what to do with it. And we went through a lot of different iterations. And uh, what we ended up arriving at was kind of giving it a this textured front wall where there was a lot of different ang- geometric angles going on, and then with a TV in the center of it, um, and we created, we had LED lights on either side, which you can see um, in these areas, where they were shining light up onto the wall, uh, going up from the wall, from the, from those LED lights. Yeah. And it really kind of just helps guide you to that front of the wall. And it, and it's exciting because it, it mimics the ge- the geometry of the room, where we had angles on the side walls kind of getting thinner as you go forward in the room. And it really all kind of like leads to that center wall um, and then complete with the clouds and and the shaping of the room in general. Yeah, I love this project too, because uh, we collaborated a ton on this one uh, because uh, you were focused a lot on that front wall piece. For me, it was those sidewall angle pieces. And I remember coming into the office and I had thought of this stair step pattern with LED lighting in the background, literally in the shower uh, <laughs> before I came to work. And then I was like, I think this is it. Cause we had actually done, I mean, you know, we've, 
we probably did eight to ten different revisions, and it never felt right. Like it never felt like the right. uh, this was the 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 actual solution. Um, and then as soon as we added that in in com- combination with what you've done on the front wall, it was like this is the first time it felt right. And you know sometimes we hit it on the first the first go round. You know it's like we mm-hmm. send a rendering and someone says that's exactly what I want. Um, but other times it takes you know eight to 10, 15 different re- revisions. And uh, it's, it, but the thing is, is that like, um, you know, we talked about our core values in another, in another uh, episode, but like we have never settle as one of them. And it, like, this is an example of a project we never settled because we could have sent something along early and said, hey, that's that, I think that's going to do it, but it never felt right. You know, right. it wasn't it. Yeah. And it's amazing when I, when I was going through kind of gathering the images for this, for this episode, there were so many different iterations for this for this for this uh, for this project, and looking back on it, they didn't look as wildly different as I remembered in my mind. <laughs> but I remember just we was we were really honing in on this direction, and it like you know it slowly kind of fell into place, yeah. and uh, and it was a really exciting one. And those are weirdly just as fun in a different way of yeah. you know getting that direction right, you know of 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 there are a million things that could look good in this room. And we came up with a bunch of things that could look good in this room, but yeah. it wasn't exactly what the client was looking for. Yeah. And so it, it's really it's really worth it in the end always. Absolutely. And this one, just speaking of inspiration shots, I remember them uh, initially sending over the, the studio we did for Crowder um, as the inspiration. Like his, mm-hmm. his room is all white. And uh, we have a YouTube video that's a whole studio walkthrough of of uh, uh, of Crowder's, and we're actually filming soon uh, one for Brooklyn Duo, so uh, yep. that'll be out, out out soon as well. So, um, but it was the cloud in that room was the kind of uh, very uh, inspired by Crowder's uh, cloud, how it angles out and uh, creates some depth to the room. Yeah, and it's amazing how as we're as we make more and more studios, and we're go in so many different directions, we kind of do start to see like the trends and whatnot of that all white look with LED lights. Mm-hmm. seems like it's been, you know, pretty popular over the last few years where we have another project going on with a client right now where they're in the, they're in the process of finishing up the project, but it's with Grand Rapids first. They're a church in Michigan. And uh, they, they drew a lot of inspiration from Brooklyn Duo and Crowder Studio where yeah. it's a lot of white, but it's a multi-room, so it's different. And so we had to tie in a lot of those elements and we'll go over that in a bit as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, and so just to go back over Brooklyn Duo, where that was the front of the room, and like I said, they were looking for that kind of uh, that uh, living room type of look in the back of the room, and this is this is what we showed. So they had they had wainscoting going around the edge, and where they just wanted to leave the walls blank so that it wasn't too busy going on uh, in the in the back of the room for their videos. And it's it's you always worry when when clients want like the clean just you know very not busy look because it's it's not that hard to render it's not it doesn't take you know it's just a straight line it's just Mm -hmm. a blank wall and you worry that is that going to be too simple is that going to be too much or too little but it it looks great it looks clean and then on video especially you you forget for 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 them in particular for the video the room isn't the star of the show there. It's the people that are performing in it. So right. they have a huge cello, a grand piano, them mm-hmm. performing. That's the show in the back of the room. Yeah. And so we had to keep that in mind for that. Yeah, and they had all those, uh, the natural light coming in through the windows. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that was the existing building had windows. And then when we built the room within a room, uh, we added some isolation windows inside of that. But having that natural light, they also have some automated shades that they can bring down if they if they don't want the natural light coming in. So it's just a really flexible environment for them. Yeah. Yeah. And so and that's what the room looked like overall. And where I remember when we were kind of doing these two styles, I was like, is that going to look like, you know, a jigsaw of a, of a, you know, a Frankenstein kind of kind of space. But it actually kind of ends up transitioning into into each other really, really well. Yeah. And uh, and I was really happy with how it ended up turning out. Yeah. They have a few videos on YouTube where the cameraman circles around them while they they perform and you see the back half and the front half. And it, it I think it actually pretty seamless, like how, yeah. how it worked out. It's yeah. nice. Um, this is another one that we did. It was this is for Cucamonga Sound out in uh, Los Angeles, I believe. Yeah, uh, uh, south south of Los Angeles. South yeah. of Los Angeles. Yes, yeah. but um, but this was another one where it was a it's a it's a two two studio uh, two room studio where with a vocal booth and then a control room, and it's in uh, the owner Robert Armitage's house, mm-hmm. and uh, he really wanted to have a. The aesthetic feature that he wanted to have in the room was the stone, was the uh, the exposed stone in the room. And so obviously it's an interior room. We had to build that into the room. It wasn't already there. Um, but that kind of was our main focus here where 
it was creating these kind of vertical columns and then kind of matching that throughout the room. And so we used like off the shelf panels that were kind of staggered on top of each other um, on these side walls and on the front um, and over on the other side as well. Mm-hmm. And they kind of helped give that long elongating space, yeah. especially because he had such a high ceiling and we really wanted to accentuate that of it almost gives the illusion of like, you know, this room, go the ceiling goes on forever. You know, yeah. it kind of just disappears up upwards. It's a, it's a good example too of uh, an aesthetic uh, choice from the client of wanting stone in the space, but stone isn't always considered an acoustical material. Right. And so we have to be uh, really conscious about where it gets placed in the room so it's not at a first reflection point or not something that's going to cause an issue acoustically because our responsibility as acoustical consultants are to make a room sound great as much as it looks great. Um, so that's something that we can help guide them and say how much stone is necessary or, 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 or possible uh, without sacrificing sound quality. Right, and letting them know where we can place it for it to, you know, more or less be out of the way acoustically so that it's not, they're not sacrificing anything for it. Absolutely. Yeah, and this space happened to be, it was a master bedroom and a uh, closet, a walk-in closet that we turned into a control room and an, and an ISO booth. So Yeah. Um, and that's another one we have a video for on our YouTube channel as well. Yeah, believe, that's true. Right? Um, there's another one we did for uh, Tanya Gallardo. She's a, a Latin artist out in Los Angeles as well. And uh, for this one, she really liked, she was inspired by the kind of all white look of by Crowders as well, but she was aware that she didn't want an all white, you know, Mm -hmm. studio and she wanted kind of like a stark contrast within it. And so we did like a combination of off the shelf panels on the walls that we backlit with LEDs and then had kind of this, this big uh, cloud at the top over there. And um, it really just, you know, it gives the room a dark feeling, but then it's also bright. It's also bright with the white and uh, it, it gives it very customizable uh, vibes. Yeah, with, with I LED mean, lights. with the white fabric um, and why it's so popular, especially with uh, LEDs are also very popular these days and, and uh, the, they just show up on the white fabric so much better than they do darker fabrics. And so we have some photos on the website and there's actually a YouTube video of this space as well that we've done on our channel. And it is uh, uh, really got uh, a lot of variants you can get depending on what color you choose on, on those LED lighting. Right. And something that just comes to mind with this one is uh, we were able to model the actual desk that she had in there where it was a uh, it was a desk from uh, Proline Studio Desk. Yeah. Uh, and even just details like that of putting those in renderings really helps excite people for a project yeah. where where seeing their actual equipment in there, they actually start to see like, oh, the, how would I be moving around in the room? Like, like, mm-hmm. is that where I want to put the monitor or do I need to put it, you know, somewhere else? Yeah. And uh, and that kind of stuff really you know, even aside from like the treatment decisions, it, it just excites somebody about a project. Yeah, I, I remember we, we we're currently working on a project for Brant Ward out in Connecticut, right. and uh, what was great about those rendering is that early on in the process, he sent us every bit of gear that he owned. Um, mm-hmm. And acoustically, that isn't as important as us knowing like the, let's say the speakers or the desk and things like that. But each piece of gear, he sent us a list. And so we had fun one day and you guys found uh, images for every piece of gear and put it in the producer desk that was in the back of his room. I love it because like two or three days passed and then he, he was giving us feedback about the renderings. He's like, I like this element, I like that. Um, and then two or three days later, he emailed us and said, uh, wait a second, I just noticed that every single piece of gear that I own is in the rack. Like it, it was completely customized. And yeah, that's something that we don't have to do. Um, but it's one of those things where it's just like, it, it excites people. It gets gets them uh, um, really, um, you know, fired up to, to get that studio to, to look and feel the way that they want it to. Yeah. And, and it's, it's something that like kind of we talk about a lot when we're talking about, you know, what our approach on projects is going to be. And like, even like when you look at, you know, our core values, when we talk about like the sound of, um, it's, it's so much beyond just kind of the technical aspects of getting a room that sounds good. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's just kind of helping a client organize their thoughts and, and feel comfortable with a project. And so paying attention to those types of details is what makes the design process feel comfortable and safe for a client. And that's kind of the role that we place at. It's taking out as much guesswork as possible and helping them feel more secure. Absolutely. Yeah. And that was our coworker, Alex Harris. He made those uh, 
he was the one on Brant Ward's project who yep. who put all the all the the attention to all that detail in there, and he did yeah. awesome with it. It, it totally paid yeah. off because like when we got that email, mm-hmm. we were all excited about it because you know he was already excited about the renderings, and it just took it to another level. Yeah, so. and it was funny where it was like, is this worth it for to spend you know a couple hours of my afternoon doing this? And it absolutely is. You yeah. know, it's it's the type of thing that really changes the project. Mm-hmm. Um, There's another one. It's a project that we're working on right now with a it's a client named Andrew Glassmacher. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't entirely remember where he's located. Fort Wayne. Fort Indiana. Wayne. Oh, nice. Yep. Um, but uh, it's another one that's, you know, it's a home studio for him where he's building it in his basement. And uh, Gavin came up with this this ceiling uh, the ceiling idea with these wood slats on the cloud. Yeah. Um, and it kind of lent itself well to kind of this, it's almost like a repeated line, like the slat pattern that we mm-hmm. kind of continue on the uh, on the base traps with the LED lights as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I drew that in AutoCAD really quickly and showed it to you, as, and and you mocked that up and really quickly and looked a lot better than it did in, <laughs> in CAD. But uh, yeah, it, it I think it's something again. It kind of visually draws your eye to the front of the room and and uh, really sets it off. So yeah, and it's another one where it's funny where you can you'll draw something in AutoCAD, and I remember with this one specifically, I rem, you know we were doing do recessed lighting in the uh, in the cloud, and so when we drew it, I was like. Uh, it came to mind that the that the rece- that the lighting wasn't going to fit between this, the slats and the pattern that we had it originally, and that we might want to space them out a, b- a bit more so we can fit the lighting in there. Yeah. And and again, it's the type of thing that you see a lot more once you see the actual room rather than just seeing oh those lights technically do fit in between those lights, but there might not be enough space for the mounting hardware behind it and whatever right. else you know. Yeah. Yeah. Once you see it in three D, it's like especially mounting of speakers and everything like that. It really. Uh, allows you to make more decisions than you if you're living just in 2D. Yeah, so. and especially with uh, another thing that comes to mind is doing rooms in Atmos. Seeing where the speakers are, especially the height channels and the surround channels, mm-hmm. because they do go in the middle of the room. Where the nice thing with the stereo system is that yeah. they're kind of out of the way behind the desk, usually in the front of the room. Mm-hmm. Um, when you throw Atmos in there, all of a sudden there are uh, eight other speakers in the room yeah. or so yeah. um, that are that could potentially get in the way. And so making the decision of, do they need to be wall mounted? Are they okay to be on stands? Are the ceiling channels enough out of the way that they're not interfering with a, you know, with somebody bumping their heads into it or interrupting mm-hmm. with doors and things like that? Um, actually seeing them in the renderings really helps clients uh, get a grip on that. For sure. Uh, this is that studio we were talking about with Grand Rapids first. Yeah. Um, they drew a lot of inspiration from from Brooklyn Duo and, mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and Crow- David Crowder's room. Mm-hmm. Where uh, they were going for the all white look, a yeah. uh, cool kind of focal point for this one was that. Uh, would you want to give a bit of the background yeah, on sure. this one? This this project is um, you know really special to all of us here. Um, the uh, the church had a, a worship uh, a pastor uh, and and uh, her name is Sarah and she um, passed away last January from uh, cancer and. Uh, she was the pastor's daughter, and and she was amazing uh, talent, and and uh, um, had won awards for worship leading. Just had a, a, a just a, a heart to help others, you know. And and um, when she got her diagnosis, uh, you know, she one of the things she did was she she had a tattoo on her uh, wrist that was an ellipses, three dots, you know. And it was more about how her story will go on even after she passed. And one of the things that she wanted to do is to raise up other worship leaders um, and to. To be able to to do this and and um, continue God's kingdom. So, uh, one of the elements that we wanted to work in because when we went up to Grand Rapids first, the first time we were there, um, many of the, the staff members also had that same ellipses tattoo, and it was just yeah. such an important part of her story. And uh, we wanted to add that into the design of the room, not in a super flashy way, uh, something subtle, but just to show that that, um, you know, that mission of hers uh, to, to live on and, and to help other people. Um, and so I think we did it really nice. You can point out some of the elements in there. Yeah, so you can see where this is the back of the control room. Uh, in the back of the room, we have out the uh, the recessed lighting recessed into the soffit trap. It comes in groups of three. So there are three on this side, three in the center, and then three on the other side. Mm-hmm. And so that is almost on the back wall, there's an ellipses of these bunches. And then within each of those, there are three, there are three lights. And so mm-hmm. we incorporated that there. Uh, and then the ceiling, we use these uh, circular light ceiling light fixtures. Yep. Um, we put those in groups of three as well. Um, and then when we go into the live room, uh, that's where we got a bit more direct with it, where mm-hmm. they wanted to have that, you know, 
directly onto one of the onto one of the wall treatments and have that be part of the focal point of the room. Yeah. And so in the back of the room, we have this uh, great big ac- acoustical panel with wood slats on the face, but then uh, within the wood slats, it'll be cut out so that it's just fabric behind revealing these three black circles. Mm-hmm. Um, and that really, you know, carries that in there as well. And it gives it, you know, aesthetically a unifying, uh, you know, ties the rooms together, but then it also just really makes it particular to such a special project and yeah. helps you know, we want to keep that spirit of why the project's happening in the first place. We want to keep that in our design. Sure. And and it's 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 part of what makes our project excite or our work exciting is having those that why behind a lot of our projects. And and it sounds like a little bit, you know, pretentious or whatever, but we want to keep those elements in the design of why they're making it in the first place. And yeah. and keeping that uh, as part of our design philosophy I think is what excites me so much about designing rooms. Absolutely. Yeah. There's another exciting project that we did with Tim Henson. Uh, he's the lead singer of the band, or uh, the lead guitar player mm-hmm. in the band Polyphia. Yeah. Um, and we did his home studio last year, and his was another really fun project where we've done a video. Or have we done a video on it? <laughs> he has a video on his page, actually, of oh, a okay. studio tour. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Um, but where he had some pre, he had some design elements that he knew he wanted to include of, you know, having wood slats on the front wall. He wanted that to be a big focal point, And then he kind of wanted the rest of the design to be a little bit more, uh, toned down. So that that was the main focus yeah. and where he'd be filming a lot more. I remember with his inspiration shot, he only supplied one. Um, and it was actually a living room. It wasn't <laughs> even a studio, but he's like, right. Hey, if, if, uh, my studio could have the vibe of, of this living room. Um, and I, I think that we did a really good job of taking a living room that wasn't an acoustical space and turning it into something that it was, uh, uh, performed at a high level. Right. And, and, it was it was exciting where he did the same thing where he gave us like his gear list of like what speakers he was going to be in having the desks and we got to throw them in there as well. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, there's another studio that has a, a cool backstory as well. If you'd want to talk about yeah, it, yeah, yeah. This is for Heroes <laughs> Camp up in uh, um, uh, Mishawaka, Indiana, and we got brought in on this project. It's actually part of our Echo Initiative, which we'll have a, a, a full episode about that at some point, but. Uh, our ECHO initiative stands for Engaging Community Through Humanitarian Outreach. And so it's, you know, ways for us to, uh, you know, a lot of times we'll do discount, uh, discounted uh, services or pro bono work uh, to help with organizations and things that, that we really believe in. And uh, this one here, when they when they reached out, is actually our first ECHO project. Um, and we just knew we wanted to be a part of it from, from the very beginning. And uh, we were working with All Pro Integrated Systems on, on this job, and we got brought into it. And it's essentially an organization that is a safe haven for kids that don't have fathers at home. And so a lot of times, you know, uh, these kids, they get off of school and they don't really have some place to go um, and could end up getting in trouble or not get their homework done or what, whatever that is. Uh, this is a place where they could gather and have people that have their best interests in mind. Uh, it's an amazing facility. It's got three full court basketball courts, a weight room, a barber shop. They even have a place, a, a, a commercial kitchen where they can teach the kids how to cook. Um, just an unbelievable uh, organization. And it's really fun to be a part of. But this studio is going to go in uh, that facility uh, because they have uh, people on staff um, that that um, uh, specialize in in, in uh, recording and and mixing and uh, gives those kids uh, uh, another thing to do that's a, a positive impact in their lives. Yeah. And some of the aesthetic details that they wanted to include in it was having these exposed LED lights mm-hmm. uh, kind of framing out the wall yeah. um, and kind of crisscrossing and interesting angles. And so we were able to show that um, as well as their logo has a uh, has a cross on it. They're mm-hmm. a Christian organization. Yeah. And um, they kind of have this cross that has an interesting shape on it. And so we actually arranged the the ceiling cloud set and the negative space of it, it includes a, sh- a cross shape that kind of features that same look. Yeah. And so again, it's another one that's kind of like a subtle uh, touch, but that we're able to communicate that to them and, you know, it, it, that gets them excited about it. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's something that, you know, keeps us excited about the project as well yeah. and, you know, lets them know that we're engaged and that we understand yeah. what they're the details doing. matter for yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then this is a, another... Uh, Another example of a studio, it was for a, uh, an organization called True Colors, mm-hmm. um, and they were building a recording studio. And uh, it's, again, like kind of incorporating things from their logo. Their logo was a horseshoe. And uh, so we included that in, uh, on a backlit wood panel on the wall in the live room. Um, and then it's, 
you know, all those wood slats on the wall are have six inches of acoustical treatment behind it. And so and that makes for a really nice focal point um, for the studio. And obviously it features a lot of, you know, LED lighting and customized looks. And uh, that was another fun one to render. Yeah. As well. So what happens when we uh, first send the, the renderings? We, we this All this stuff, uh, the inspiration shots and like us uh, coming up with the acoustical details and blending it with the aesthetics. Um, but then at some point we got to get it to a point where we're like, are we going to share this with the client? Right. Um, what, what happens from there? Um, well, once we show it to the client, you know, a lot of work obviously goes into that first batch of renderings of, mm-hmm. of us taking our first pass and digesting their, their, their inspiration shots and seeing what comes out. Uh, once we send it to them, you know, they give us some feedback. Sometimes it's not a ton of feedback. Sometimes it's, you know, we need to go in a big, uh, totally different direction and, uh, you know, we're comfortable either way. Yeah. Um, but once we've given it to them and they're able to, uh, they give us that feedback, we slowly start, you know, creating that iterative process and and figuring out what the new direction we need to go in um does that yeah answer? yeah absolutely yeah. i mean and it's something where um every little bit of feedback they give us we get closer and closer to that final product mm-hmm. and it's it's really uh, fun because we don't have any ego about this you know like uh you know we say it all the time like we're kind of de facto interior designers on these projects even though we 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 don't have a background in that. We've just done enough of these to that uh, we know what looks good and, and we can help guide people towards that. But, um, you know, we want any and all feedback on that first batch of rendering so that, that they could tell us they hated every bit of it and that would give us good information to move move to the next stage. But normally uh, there's, you know, uh, a ton of elements that they really enjoy and then it's just dialing it in for, for the final renderings. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think that's a great overview of the renderings. I mean, you do a phenomenal job with it, and, and uh, clients really resonate with with what you're doing on that front and and how we we present these renderings to people. Um, and it's just uh, you know just to reiterate, like that aesthetic piece and how you feel inside your studio is sometimes just as important as how uh, um, acoustically accurate it is. Yeah, I I can't. You know, I I had an I have an I graduated with an engineering degree, and I it's been one of the biggest surprise to me is how important getting that vibe correct is mm-hmm. and how it, it really matters just as much as having an accurate space mm-hmm. of a, you know, it's all part of creating that healthy, comfortable environment for a client. Yeah. And it's, it's, it really is, you know, just important as important as making the room sound good. And they, they work together in a, in a really cool, harmonious way. Nice. Well, uh, that's it for this episode. Um, if you have any ideas, uh, when it comes to the aesthetics of studios, you want to fire our way, uh, info at haversickdesigns.com is a great way to reach us. Or if you have any questions about uh, future episodes that you'd like to see some content on, um, definitely fire that off to us. And, uh, we just really appreciate you being part of the sound project and we'll see you next week. See you next week. Mm-hmm.